The rich history of the Indianapolis Public Library can be found in a new online digital collection. The Lawrence J. Downey History Collection is available from the library's website at ndpl.org. With us to talk about this new collection is Pam Swagner with the library's digitization team. Pam, I think the word fascinating would apply to this new online collection. What all will people find in this? Well, you're right. It is a fascinating collection. There are a number of items that we have digitized from our Indianapolis Special Collections room down at Central. Mm -hmm. So everything in this collection is something that we own. Um, there are lots of photographs and there are things like annual reports, um, uh, some handwritten documents that are really interesting. One of them is entitled A Plea for a Public Library. It was written by Hanford Edson in 1868 on Thanksgiving Day and it's where he gave a plea for the public library and why we needed one in Indianapolis. Even though Indianapolis was around since the 1820s, by 1868 we still did not have a public library. Now again this collection is called the Lawrence J. Downey Historical Collection of Digital mm -hmm. Images and Artifacts and so forth. Many people may not know who Lawrence J. Downey was, Larry right. Downey as we knew him here at the library. Mm -hmm. He was a librarian here for 42 years and when he retired he was the associate director. And one of the things he did is he wrote a comprehensive history of the library titled A Live Thing in the Whole Town. He got that title from Eliza Browning who was a former library director here and she believed that the library needed to be a live thing in the whole town. So many of the images come from this book. Mm -hmm. And we'll take a look at many of those images now, some that are in the book that is still available for pickup here at the library, and some that aren't. But the first uh, couple that we'll look at uh, relate to the laying of the cornerstone for the then new Central Library back in 1916. Yes. Tell us about this first one. The first image is Joseph H. Keller. He was the president of the Indianapolis School Board, and here he is. Uh, obviously giving a speech, and uh, I really like this photograph. You can see everybody's dressed up. Yes. And wearing their hats. It was a big event. And on that same occasion, one of Indiana's greats. Yes, Meredith Nicholson, who was one of Indianapolis's great authors, is giving his speech. And one of the things I like about this is you can tell it was a sunny day. You can see his shadow being cast on the uh, concrete behind him. It is so fun to look back at photos of the, the congregations of people at this event yes. especially, just uh, hundreds and hundreds of people outdoors. From there we go to a photo of similar era, circa 1915. Yes. What is this? This is the interior of the Irvington branch as it was. Um, it, it existed at this location from 1914 to 1921 on East Washington Street. And you can get a lot of detail on this picture too. There's actually an old ornate stove right behind one of the little girls in line to check out yes. her book. You can see the stovepipe going sure up can. too. Yes. And uh, look at just how engaged all the children look behind yes. the desk there. And now we're going back to 1956 and uh, one of Indianapolis's established great media icons, uh, uh, Mr. Brown. Yes, this is a picture of librarian Hortense Kelly and Hilton U. Brown. They are here in this photograph at the Irvington branch as it's opening in 1956, it was being called the Brown Branch. At that time, at after the time. Yes. Mr. Brown, Hilton Correct. Brown, who was a, a magnet at the Indianapolis News And also, we have another collection in our digital collections, the Irvington Oral Histories, and uh, he is a big player in, in that and is talked about quite a bit. This is one of my favorites because it, uh, it, it includes a couple of components. One, the building in the background, which you'll talk about as being a Carnegie building, but look at how books were delivered back in 1921 to the West Indianapolis yes, branch. Yes, this is a gentleman named Mr. Easley. He was one of the drivers for the library at the time. And this was the West Indianapolis branch, as you said, and it was one of five of our Carnegie libraries. Mm -hmm. We had five to start with uh, starting in the early 20th century. We've only got two left now, mm -hmm. but uh, you can see a piece of that. And we've got a better photograph of this library branch in the collections, so you can see the whole thing. Look how dapper the library driver oh, was. <laughs> now we go from there to uh, this photo back in 1946. Former director Marion McFadden, people may right. know that name from the McFadden Lecture that the library does host each year, and Mr. L.S. Ayers. Yes, he donated this globe to the library. This was a 50-inch globe, and it was said to be one of the world's largest wow. at the time. And this is at Central Library. At Central Lyman library. S. Ayers, who was vice president of the department store chain. Right. 
And the final photo we'll look at uh, a very, very happy group of uh, youngsters from 1949 at the new, then new Broad Ripple Bridge. Yes, yes, and just looks like these guys are having some fun <laughs> helping uh, move some books into the library branch. Yes. Well, there are literally hundreds of images, photos, artifacts. Uh, Pam mentioned the handwritten note from the Reverend in 1868 that kind of got the momentum rolling for an Indianapolis public library. But this isn't the only thing that's in the library digital collection. We have all sorts of community-oriented um, projects right. that are portrayed in this. Tell us about some of those. We have many collections right now. We, we've done a lot of high school yearbooks. And uh, some of you have seen the Firefighters yes. Museum collection. It's very interesting. And the Irvington Oral Histories, which I just mentioned. And we have plans to do so many more collections in the future. And uh, we're just lining them up and hoping mm. we can get a lot more done. Now, specifically, where can people go? How do people find these on the website? They can go in through our main page at ndpl.org and click on the digital collections listing, and they can go right in. It's just that simple. It is. Very good. Pam Swadener with the library's digitization team talking about the new Lawrence J. Downey History Collection of Online Images. And again, ndpl.org is the site, and we hope you take advantage of this fascinating offering.